What's up everybody, it's John from Tech coming at you today with an awesome video presenting you my best $400 console killing gaming PC build. So before I get right into the component selection and the rationale for why I chose each part, let me first give you the expected frame per second performance in a variety of AAA titles. Starting off with a really popular Grand Theft Auto 5, very high settings at 1080p. And I'll be keeping all this at 1080p since I think 1080p is really the sweet spot for this build getting high FPS. Don't wanna sacrifice on frame times for higher resolution in my opinion, although this PC is capable of 1440p, 4K in select titles, and if you wanted to tweak the settings a bit. So back to the topic at hand. Grand Theft Auto 5, average FPS of 65, very high settings, and Rise of the Tomb Raider, very high settings, DirectX 12, average FPS of 56, and in Mirror's Edge Catalyst, ultra settings, 47 FPS, and in Doom with the Vulcan API at 1080p, ultra settings, average FPS of 96, for Battlefield 1 multiplayer, average FPS of 51 on ultra, DirectX 11, and for Overwatch, ultra settings, average FPS of 108. So needless to say, this PC really packs a serious punch for just $400, so let's jump right into the component selection. Up first for the processor, I went with one from Intel. I know Ryzen 3 is just around the corner, so I wouldn't blame you guys if you wanted to hold out and see what Ryzen has to offer because I'm pretty sure Ryzen 3 is going to be very budget friendly and also pack a serious punch. But this Intel KV Lake Pentium G4560 with suggested retail pricing of $64. You can probably pick this up for sub $80. So this isn't the Pentium of the old guys that just had dual core crippled memory bandwidth. No, this has hyper threading. So four threads, dual core, and don't expect to see the CPU bottlenecking the system with graphics all the way up to RX 480 GTX 1060 levels of performance, making the Pentium G4560 the go-to choice for a budget build. So let's talk about the motherboard already. This one from Gigabyte, the GA250M DS3H Micro ATX motherboard for just $70. So it's quite the bargain, just $70 and getting you the Intel B250 chipset. And it also has everything you really want out of a budget motherboard, even more, I would say, having all the standard back panel connectors, including D-Sub, HDMI, mouse, keyboard, USB 2.0, USB 3.1 Gen 1, that RJ45 LAN, also audio in, audio out, mic jack in, and for internal connectors, it really has a lot, including two hybrid fan headers, five, six gigabit per second SATA ports, and what I really love about this motherboard is that it includes a PCIe Gen 3 M.2 connector. So down the road, if you wanted to add a really blazing fast M.2 PCIe solid state drive, you're gonna have that option open for you. Okay guys, let's skip ahead to the graphics card for this gaming PC build since the GPU is arguably the most important component for a gaming build. This one from Team Green, this is the EVGA GTX 1050 Ti Super Clocked Edition, four gigabytes of G5 memory for just under $140. So I did go Team Green with this build, although if you can find an AMD Radeon RX 470, 570 for not much more than $140, maybe $160, it's definitely worth it since the RX 470, 570 is the price to performance king for gaming right now. The only thing is prices are all jacked up for those Radeon graphics cards, being that it turns out the RX Radeon graphics are really good, really efficient at Ethereum mining. And it's a cryptocurrency, it's up like near 3000% this year, so the miners are all buying them up. If not that, then you have people buying the graphics cards just to flip them for a quick profit. So let's just stick at the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti because you're still getting such smooth, fluid, and respectable FPS in the majority of AAA titles. Can even game at 1440p, 4K if you're game specific and you don't mind tweaking the settings. And before I forget to mention the CPU cooler for this build, I'm just gonna be using the stock cooler that comes with the KB Lake Pentium G4560. Being that it's pretty easy to cool, has a thermal design power of just 54 watts, and being a budget build, there's no reason to spend extra money on an aftermarket cooler since the stock cooler will get the job done. So let's go ahead and talk about the random access memory for this build. Wanted to get the sweet spot at eight gigabytes, so I went with a kit by Micron, the Crucial Ballistic Sport LT DDR4 2400 megahertz random access memory for just 
$65. This is a really sweet deal. Again, that sweet spot at eight gigabytes, you get dual channel RAM and the motherboard does have four DIMM. So if you wanted to add two more sticks of RAM down the road, that option is definitely open to you. And it may be something you wanna do since games are becoming more and more demanding. And it's getting to that point where in certain titles, eight gigabytes is still the sweet spot, but it's cutting it close. So give yourself a little more headroom for multitasking and whatnot. Add two more sticks down the road, but for now, this kit is really snazzy looking. It comes in a variety of colors, making that digital camo heat shield look really slick. Okay, moving on now to storage for this gaming PC build. I went super budget here, and I mean really budget. I found a 250 gigabyte, 7200 RPM mechanical hard drive for just $15. So I know 250 gigabytes is definitely not enough if you plan to store a lot of games on here, being the game file sizes are getting pretty big. But for just $15, this certainly is enough to get you started. And being that storage is so easy to add more, you can upgrade more capacity, put a solid state drive into this build really easily. I think in storage, that's a really good place to save money to allocate to the more important core components of this gaming PC build like the CPU and GPU. So that's what I went ahead and did, but I will leave a couple options down below for those of you with a little extra coin to spend on storage. Okay, and now for the PC case, again, going ultra budget here for just $27. This is of the micro ATX variety, which is actually really perfect for that gigabyte micro ATX motherboard that we went with and has a small footprint, also takes standard ATX power supplies. $27, the Rosewell FBM one. So this is really bare bones, guys. And I mean, super bare bones. Look at the inside of this case just like nothing there but it's actually really easy to build in but the cables are just straightforward you can tuck them out of the way up at the top of the case and it does have your standard front io audio in audio out as well as two usb 2.0 ports but what i really like about this case i didn't mention is that it has a 120 millimeter included pre-installed fan in the front as well as an 80 millimeter fan in exhaust so you get two fans for a case under $30, not a bad deal in my opinion. And for that power supply, of course I wanted to keep budget in mind, but also get some reliable, consistent power. So this is from EVGA having among the highest reputation, just the 430 watt, 80 plus certified ATX power supply. So it's non-modular, but has all the cables you need. There's a cool black sleeve on them. You are gonna see the, the yellow ketchup mustard look, but you know, there's no side window in the case, so no big deal. And the really good news is that this power supply sets you back just $30. You get that three year customer support and warranty from EVGA. And at the end of the day, guys, reliable power up to 80% efficiency under typical load for just 30 bucks, can't complain. And that's all I got for this $400 console killing gaming PC build. You let me know what you think of this PC build in the comment section down below. Thoughts, suggestions, insights, and any randomness are always welcome down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, wanna see more like it. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, Awe of Tech, what are you guys waiting for? Be sure to subscribe, be sure to turn those notifications on to be up to date with my latest tech videos. This is John from Awe of Tech, it's been awesome. Cannot wait to catch you all in the next video. Peace out, everyone.